Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner into an actual Yu-Gi-Oh! video because I know what the hell. Well, the thing is this past weekend I went to regionals in Winnipeg and I ended up playing Necros at this as this is the deck that I've been building for the last month and this would be my only chance to play it while at full power and I was damn well going to do it and I did. As for how I did, I ultimately came up a little short finishing 10th after Swiss and you needed to be in top 8, so I bubbled. It's unfortunate. I, my tiebreakers just kind of screwed me over and as a result I'm not going next this year and this was my only chance to go and to get the invite as my next opportunity will be in fall, so no 2014 Nationals for me, which is a bit of a shame because a couple of my friends are going, but... Uh, it is what it is. I can at least try again in the fall when the new Red Eyes cards come out. And we'll get to that in a bit. So, uh, as for the deck list itself, I'm going to do this. I'm going to give you guys uh, my list of what I ran, and then I'll like make a brief report. A much more detailed tournament report will be posted on my blog, so just check that out. As it details like all the nitty-gritty detail things, like the good, the bad, the ugly, the trip itself. And some of my things... Um, thoughts behind the trip like how I was like half terrified going into this because I developed a fear of car trips because of incident in past so yeah let's get into this so I played Necros I played a more standard list I didn't want to get too cute with things like Armageddon Knight Farfa and Dragon because I didn't think I'd be seeing a whole lot of mirrors as a good portion of the Necros players in Winnipeg were judging so I'd probably be seeing about four players at most and I didn't want to build my deck so teched up from the mirror that it would come at the cost of being able to give me some really not good matchups against Rogue so yeah my deck was built in mind of beating of being able to handle Rogue in the early rounds and then I could have my side handle the meta decks didn't pan out that way but it is what it is. Uh, for the ritual lineup, these are just what I played. Standard. Colossalus, I don't like, but you have to run it because it's a one, it's a target for sure when you tribute for it, and it allows it so that when you summon Senju, you can get this and then get a ritual spell. And he helps get your ritual spell train going. Uh, two copies of Shirts, don't see that changing. Three copies of Manju, three copies of Senju, one Jin. Dumb card, but you gotta run it. This, it, this deck can abuse it. And then I decided to get cheeky and run a copy of Kaiku as my tech. Every Necro's deck list will run some kind of tech. You'll see things like the Armageddon Knight Engine. You'll see Cyblocker. I opted to go with Kaiku as I figured he would give me an advantage in the Mirror Game 1 as it allowed me to shut off Valkyris when I go for pushes. And that he had good applications against a few rogue decks such as Volcanics in banishing their shells, their rockets. I mean, and there, oh, what is it? What am I thinking of? Uh, scatter shots. That's the one I'm thinking about. If they scatter shot me once, that's great. Then that means I can summon Kaiku, swing, and get rid of the scatter shots and stop their means of re removal. So that's a thing. He also had strong applications versus Dark Matter Dragon, although I never got to play that. And he's an 1800 body that sometimes comes up. But yeah, that was why I ran Kaiku. I also could have ran Side Blocker, and I probably should have just because he's. He's good against a lot of things. So, like, if you're expecting your opponent to hold you down with a Mirror Force push, you'll just call that. For the spells, I ran Trip MST because I expected to see Floodgates, and I did. Triple Preparation of Rights, six Mirrors. Necro's Mirror is not as good as the other ones, and honestly, I might consider cutting it to one at some point and going with Triple Cycle, just because Cycle is amazing in the mid to late game. Kaleidoscope is amazing in the early to mid game. And Mirror is just kind of there because you can go one Mirror, Tribute sure it, and then you can go m Mirror, the other thing. Like It is a necessity, and you and you have to run at least one. I sided out one copy, though, every game, and I did. I only ever really missed the second copy once. And then for the rest of the spells, I ran three books plus a Regeki as my Jin outs. And over Shared Rides, I played Mind Crush as I figured it'd be much more viable against many of the Rogue decks. And it was. I was crushing things... A fair amount. I got crushed a fair amount too, so this thing is it's disgusting. And it's to the point where honestly I'm probably gonna start side decking Gemini Imps as people will be flipping Mind Crush on me all the time. Necros is the type of deck where Mind Crush just rips apart. Like it is it's actually quite frightening how much Mind Crush can hurt you. And I got to I have to learn 
how to play around it. And there are ways to play around it. And uh, I got to do a better job of being able to play around it. Like, I'm going to, even though I was playing Necros, which is, to some people is an incredibly stupid, powerful deck that takes no thought and skill to play, I'm going to tell you guys that is completely wrong. You can be playing Necros, but my god, there's a there's a difference between knowing how to play Necros and knowing how to play it well. I can play it above average, but I, like the, some of the other Necros players there, no, they were like on a level far beyond me, and I was making minor mistakes that in some cases actually cost me some games, in other cases I still won, but I was upset. It's like, oh yeah, I won, but I made a glaring mistake here, and I'm mad at myself for it. Like, I'm the type of person who gets upset when he does not play well, and I'll beat myself over it. I've actually gone on tilt a couple times because of just how bad they have misplayed. And I managed to avoid doing that here for the most part, but yeah, I made misplays. And the major ones I've noted in my report, for the extra deck, for I didn't really do anything too out of the ordinary. I decided to run Red Nova Dragon, though, as my level 12, because this was probably the only chance I'd ever bust out my level, my ultimate rare Red Nova. I thought about playing my Divine Neos, but I decided to not do that. I ran Star Eaters, my 11, and then two Heralds from fours. For the Xyz, one Dweller, one Castell, double Digustal and Meryl. This is going to be much more relevant in the new format. Cowboy, Dire Wolf, Exiton, Chain, Rhapsody, Arc, and Ragnar Zero. Most of these came up. Exiton did not. That's because I was never in a situation where I needed the Exiton. And then for the side, which was built to deal with both meta and rogue, uh, I ran the hands. These were are not good against meta, but they're amazing against Rogue, which I faced a fair bit amount of. The third Mind Crush, Trip Decree. This card was amazing. Trip Twister for Floodgates, and then Trip Shared Ride. As for the tournament itself, it was very well done. Uh, shoutouts to the judges. Shoutouts to Jordan. Shoutouts to Mega Monkey. He was one of the judges actually. And uh, shoutouts to. Oh, I wish I could remember your name, but I can't. Like, he was my round one opponent playing Beals Turbo, and he was actually a subscriber of mine, and we chatted for a bit, and he was like, yeah, I recognize you. I've, I've been watching your stuff for a year, and I was like, oh, wow. That's, I, wow. I was like, I never thought I'd actually see the day where I met one of my own channel subscribers, but yeah, that was actually pretty neat, so. I chatted with a couple other people at the tournament, too. Like, uh, there was one guy who was playing Dark Matter Dragon, and I knew he was playing Dark Matter Dragon, because he just appeared to be the type of guy, and like we chatted for a bit too. He said he was also playing Dragoonity back when it was a thing. It was like, oh god, Dragoonity, and we all just started gushing over the deck. And how we play it now, I was like, uh, it's not even close to ready, and even then, it's, it's been power crept. And this is just a sad truth of it, but yeah, we all talked about like how much we love Dragoonity, and Dragon Ruler, uh, Ravine Ruler and such, and that was a thing. Uh, I talked with another player about dragons and rituals, actually, just how much I liked blue cards. Uh, I even, like, like one of the reasons why I went to this tournament, uh, this trip, aside from the tournament, was that I knew Winnipeg had a copy of this guy, Fortress Whale, which I needed for my ritual collection, which I'm now building. Much like Mega Monkey's Xyz collection, I want to collect every single ritual monster that you can get. And some of these buggers are going to be difficult to find because they're from, uh, what is this one? Tournament Pack 7. That's old. Like, I still gotta get Doku Rider, Garma Sword, uh, and some other things from that, from these packs, but... Now, uh, Fortress Will is, like, the more difficult one. I think he, he was the most expensive one, too, so... That was a thing. As for what I faced, I faced Beals Turbo Round 1. He was the guy who I mentioned earlier. I played Volcanics Round 2, won that one. Around both of those, I lost round four to Klee, lost round five to the Mirror, one to, no wait, round three was to Klee, round four was the Mirror, round five was against, uh, uh, he, he must have been, he must have been new, that's all I can say is he was a new guy playing Gear Gear Ancient Gears, Round seven was against Girgia Car Curry, and then round uh, round six was against Girgia Car Curry, and then round seven was against Ritual Beasts. That guy, like I didn't, he was not exactly like the great, most pleasant player to play with, as he, it was clear to me he was a bit on tilt, like just from his actions, like 
I guess I've picked up some mannerisms from watching ARG streams all the time. Like, when I was drawing for turn, I was doing this. And he kind of rolled his eyes at it. And I later found out that he was a guy who tried to get someone uh, a game loss for not resolving a sacrifice. Because the guy was like, I guess he was he was trying to rule shark or something. So, and looking back on it now, I was like, oh, I beat a guy who was probably a huge jerk. That's That's good to know. And that was really about it for like the tournament itself. Again, I didn't quite make it. I got tenth, which actually made me a bit upset. So I ended up making nowhere near the level of uh, of a scene that the uh, uh, the the ritual beast guy did. But I I was upset to the point where I did you know, like go and say frick and such. So it was a bit noticeable, but. Yeah, I was really upset because I thought, I legitimately thought I had it. It's like, I, after those two losses, I was feeling down. And then I just made it a point to, like, not screw up because I was screwing up. And then I thought I was actually just playing really well near the end. But, you know, ultimately it just didn't come up. I came up short. And it's my own damn fault in addition to tiebreaker just being a bitch. Sorry for the language, but, yeah. 10th uh, is still not bad considering that I was... I finished the the uh, highest out of all players from Regina. I was one of the two SAS players to finish within a respectable amount. The other one got top eight. Like, he got the eighth place slot. There was a lot of people who could have gotten that eighth place slot, too. So, it was, it was really tight. Um, what else can I mention about that tournament I was noting? The second place player, the Klee player that I lost to, played on what was one of the best mats ever. It was a towel... Uh, with marker on it to make it look like a spell ground. And then when I was playing against... Uh, what was it? Oh, it was my round... 7 match? I don't know what round match it was, but I was playing next to a guy who had a Grumpy Cat mat, and his opponent was playing with a Doge mat. And I was like, what is this? I don't even... It was the Battle of the Memes. I don't know who won the match, but the way I see it is, all of us won in general for seeing this. And then I did some trades, and then we all went back to uh, some place called Monados? Monavos? It was a good place. Uh, cool. I had a clubhouse sandwich from there. It was delicious. And then we all went back to Fusion Gaming for a bit, and then we all went back uh, to the place we were staying at and crashed. And then we all came back here. And then uh, I started talking theory with Mega Monkey over what we could do with this deck for next one because he's got the deck done too. The Brio deck I actually have here, this uh, the third Brio, uh, he's gonna be trying to get off of me. So uh, I don't feel bad about having three Brios. Like I pulled two of them myself, so it's not like I went too hard into the paint on this deck. And like I had to get this one, the third one myself. The rest of it I was able to get off of just trades and eBay like selling cards on eBay and then getting it. But yeah, this Brio is going to summon that I'm going to be using to get a Trishula, a second Trishula in case I ever need it, and some uh, Vanguard cards that'll be helpful, like an SP Descendant, because Narukami, love them. Uh, and that's all I can really say about this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As for what will be coming up on this channel, people have been asking me about my thoughts on the new Red Eye support, which I know about them, I have things I want to say about them, but that'll be a separate video. And my thoughts on how I think dragons will be faring post banless that's another video in itself. In addition to that, I have some more Carta Vanguard things I want to do, but yeah, don't worry, the Yu-Gi-Oh! content will be coming. The reason why I've just been lacking on it is because I've been playing Necros for this past month, and I know not many people really care for them. So, what was the point of uploading videos that... People were just going to be like, rah, 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 rah. dislike, 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 unsub, 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 unsub. Fuck Necros, fuck Necros. All I can say about this deck is, I legitimately like it. Like, uh, Necros, they are powerful, yes. I cannot deny how stupidly strong they made them, but just looking at them on a base level, they take the ritual mechanic to places that I never thought I'd see. Like ritual spells that summon by using monsters from the extra deck or multiple monsters. Ritual summoning from the graveyard. Banishing cards from the graveyard for rituals. I mean, for God's sakes, because of Necro's Exomere, they made a Red Eyes ritual spell card. That's not half bad. You can banish your Red Eyes monsters from the graveyard as tributes. Oh my God, that is so awesome. 
And like the red eyes ritual monster is actually really damn good. And I want to build a deck around that. And like you have ritual monsters now that don't do like don't sit in your hand dead when you get them. Oh my god. Like you can now like, oh, I drew a ritual monster but no ritual spell. Okay, I'll pitch this ritual monster to add the spell to my hand so I can eventually perform rituals on the plane. Like, oh my god. Ritual, like, Konami finally made rituals not suck, and I'm so happy about that. Unfortunately, I got Preparation of Rights limited, but the card in itself was actually pretty bad design, and I'm not going to, as much as I want to uh, turn my nose at that and say, no, 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 Preparation of Rights is perfectly bad, and Mondrian's engine is perfectly fine, no. They are kind of, like, really, 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 really good. It's just the ritual mechanic has been so bad for so long that it's never been an issue, but now that the ritual mechanic has been made good, we have problem cards. Like the Jins. Back when it was just North Wemkel and Harold, these cards were just annoying. Now, though, they're actually kind of degenerate. But that's just the thing I've come to accept. As it is, though, I'm really happy to be playing with blue cards that are really good. Like, I am going to enjoy. I'm going to be playing this deck for the foreseeable future while dicking around with things on the side, like uh, Heraldic Beasts. And now that this regionals is over, I can actually finally start playing with the new Red Eyes cards. Like, every time I've been on Dev Pro, it's been like, I'll, I'll, I have to play Test Necros. And so I did. But now I can actually play the damn Red Eyes cards. So, yeah. That's all things to look for in the future. But as it is, uh, uh, yeah. Blue cards and dragons. This is a deck that can do both to an extent. And I have no regrets playing this. So, yeah, I'm just going to stop here now because i'm rambling and all i can say is thank you guys for watching and remember dragons don't die they just sleep